Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lombasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, two million dollar bill for Fiji Sevens. Charges amended for Australian couple. And contractors warned over OHS Act. From the studios of FBC Suba, Amrita Sagar. The Fiji Rugby Union has today revealed it spends around a massive $2 million on the Fiji Airways men's sevens team each season. While this is miniature compared to what some other top rugby nations fork out, the union says it's not an easy task to deliver a world-class team. On the eve of the Hamilton Sevens in New Zealand, FRU says the individual nations have to fork out majority of the expenses when playing in the World Series. Vashnil Prasad has more. The task of being tagged as the best in the code does not come cheap. The Fiji Rugby Union today is saying it's becoming an expensive affair to operate a team in the World Series. Usually you look at that as a challenge, uh, but it's quite a, uh, to operate a, a sevens team. It's a huge, uh, it's an ongoing uh, sort of machine eh? that's running and uh, incurring a lot of costs and so forth. Eh? While this figure is for the series expenses, the dollar value goes up when it is World Cup, Olympic or Commonwealth Games year, when expenses can reach up to $5 million. Despite the high running cost, the union is planning to once again become the most revered team in the world in the build-up to the defense of the Olympic gold medal next year. This is a journey to the Olympics um, uh, from the rugby union uh, Admin side, uh, side, we are fully supporting the team on their gym, uh, targeted at uh, uh, winning the series this, uh, this year and then building up to the defending a gold medal. Mm -hmm. The Fijian government says it will continue with its support for the code, which has always united a nation, adding the unpolished diamonds need to be unearthed for the future. Uh, improving ranking is one thing, but I also see that we've got to focus also internally and build our grassroots. To have a better team at the Olympic, to have a better team uh, out there in the Commonwealth, the Pacific Games. If we don't do it right, right, right from the grassroots, it will never work very well. As Kalyone Nasoko and his team gears up to the defense of the Hamilton title, the sacrifices of the parent body and its players need to be saluted. Wow. Vashnil Prasad, FBC News. A 30-year-old man charged with one count of murder appeared before the Nasinu Magistrate's Court today. The court heard that on the 10th of this month, Chakope Neymawi allegedly murdered his 35-year-old wife in Nasinu. Prosecution requested the matter to be transferred to the High Court as it is an indictable offence. This was approved by the magistrate. The matter will be called at the Suva High Court on February 1st. An Australian couple allegedly involved in drug-related offences had their charges amended by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution today. Yvette and John Nikolic are alleged to have unlawfully imported illicit drugs and ammunition in Denarau Nandi last year. Rachel Nath has the details. The final pre-trial conference for the Australian couple took place in the Suva High Court today. State lawyer and assistant DPP Lee Burney says there are new developments in the case and they will be relying on the caution interview during the course of the trial. Burney also informed the court that the state has amended the charges and has introduced two alternative counts. The two are jointly charged with two counts each of importing an illicit drug with two alternative counts of possessing an illicit drug. The two are also charged with a count each of possessing arms and ammunition without holding an arms license. The couple was arrested after authorities seized 13 bricks of cocaine weighing 15 kilograms as well as ecstasy tablets with an estimated value of 30 million from their yacht. Officials also found $30,000 in undeclared currency, guns and ammunition on board. 
Defence counsel did not challenge the use of the caution interview, but requested if the interviewing officer could be present in court as he would like to cross-examine the officer. The two have been further remanded and the trial will start on Monday. Rachel Nam, FBC News. Two Cyprus nationals charged with money laundering pleaded not guilty today to their amended charges in the Suva High Court. Loizos and Cleantis Pedris faced charges involving the withdrawal of cash from several ATMs in Suva. On the first count of money laundering in December 2017, they were allegedly engaged either directly or indirectly obtaining $95,590 that were proceeds of crime while knowing it was derived from some form of unlawful activity. On the second count, the attempt to obtain property by deception. It is alleged they procured $41,540 from BSP with the intention to permanently deprive the bank of the amount. They also denied the last count, being in possession of property suspected of being proceeds of crime where they allegedly possess $203,009. The matter will be recalled on February 18th. A 35-year-old man who allegedly attacked on-duty police officers during a drug operation at the Wailolo Beach in Nandi on Wednesday appeared at the magistrate's court this afternoon. Sedi Randomole is charged with two counts of serious assault and one count of recklessness and negligence. Randomole was arrested with a juvenile at Solevu on Malolo Island. The prosecution objected to his bail on the grounds that he has 28 previous convictions and that he had also breached his bail conditions. He has f been further remanded in custody. The matter has been adjourned to February 8th. The Construction Industry Council will soon penalize contractors who fail to comply with the Occupation Health and Safety Act. President Gordon Jenkins believes due to non-compliance, some construction companies have put their workers in danger. Senior Nimboyla reports. The Construction Industry Council members have seen some workers are on sites in flip-flops without safety helmets and are performing dangerous acts like climbing without safety harness. Uh, it is really poss possibly falls on the shoulders of developer rather than, well, the contractor rather than the developer even that, that he makes sure there's some quite stringent fining, uh, fining methods within the act and uh, I don't think it's been enforced very well. Jenkins says all contractors are aware of the OHS Act and must comply to improve safety at the workplace. There is a law for OHS. It's, um, it's been enforced since 1996 and uh, a lot of people aren't complying with this and therefore uh, they need to, it needs to be enforced. Council Chief Executive Vijay Naidu says they're working on training builders so they are fully aware of the provisions in the Act. We are now trying to better educate our tradespeople in the building and industry to be more qualified, have national qualifications uh, so that they can be more um, technically qualified to be in the field in the construction industry. Naidu says it is the responsibility of the builders themselves to ensure that their workers' safety comes first. Sainiani Mboila, FBC News. Still to come, new project to help ease access to legal services. And farmers call for financial literacy training details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakash, on the Wagarong and Bulafe, Nabondo and Nasir. Oya was it says, Lombasa. Prime Minister Vorangabani Marama is expected to attend the Pacific Islands Forum Leaders Meeting, which will be held in Tuvalu later this year. The Fiji Teachers Union wants the Education Ministry to pay the teachers their correct salary. This after some teachers raised concerns with the union that they were underpaid this week. FDU General Secretary Agni Deo Singh claims he has been inundated with calls and text messages. Singh says some teachers who inquired with the ministry were told there were delays in the renewal of their contracts. 
He says this should have been sorted out much earlier. Uh, some received as little as five dollars, uh, some received thirty-two dollars, some said they received one dollar fifty. Uh, there are numerous uh, cases like that uh, and uh, uh, we believe that uh, there would be about a thousand uh, teachers who have been affected by this uh, short payment. Meanwhile, Education Ministry Permanent Secretary Alison Birchall refused to make any comment when contacted by FBC News. The non-cane farmers are requesting for more financial literacy training so they can get better yields from their farms. The farmers claim they are not very familiar with how to access funds or take loans and as a result they rely heavily on the middleman for financial support. Savaratamboa reports the Fiji Crop and Livestock Council is looking at ways to help farmers overcome this challenge. Many of these farmers are totally dependent on the middleman to provide transportation, market their produce and even give advice on how to obtain finance. I didn't know that funds are available for us and I believe we need to be trained on that. It's difficult for me to access it. When I go to FDB for assistance, I found it difficult so I came back. The Fiji Crop and Livestock Council agrees farmers need more financial literacy training and they are working with the Fiji Development Bank on this. We need to sign a memorandum of agreement first with the Ministry of Agriculture, with government through the Ministry of Agriculture. And once we do that, then we can access it. Meanwhile, FDB is suggesting farmers also need to work closely with the Agriculture Ministry. Farmers will have to, um, to uh, seek advice from the Ministry of Agriculture who will do the on-site uh, inspection and uh, prepare a cropping program and farming report that the FDB will look at. FCLC represents almost 60,000 farmers across the agricultural industry ranging from pigs, honey, dalo, yangona to rice, coconut, dairy, organics, fruits and vegetables. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. Fijians will now be able to easily access legal services. This is the European Union will be giving over half a million dollars grant to three civil society organizations to undertake the Fiji Access to Justice project. Ali Kimbia reports. The Fiji Access Justice project aims to help people understand the legal services. It's about improving the entire Fijian justice system of which we are a pivotal part. Ladies and gentlemen, this cooperation is indeed meant to improve Fiji's justice sector needs and accessibility to it by our fellow Fijians. The funds will be utilized by Medical Services Pacific, Empower Pacific and the Fiji Disabled People's Federation to provide counseling and protection support services. For the three CSOs, the project will also enable them to identify and discuss key human rights challenges. We will be working with UNDP and our government partners to provide these services for the next number of years. We all should join hands together and stand up and make ourselves count against gender-based violence, sexual gender-based violence. So that's something that we need to do and we need to make our stand firm. The three CSOs are expected to provide justice support services in their respective areas of expertise with the focus on rural and maritime communities. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. The Australian High Commissioner to Fiji, John Feek, celebrated Australia Day at his residence last night. Among other members of the diplomatic corps and dignitaries, the invited guests also included President Major General Retired Chiochi Konrote, Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama and Cabinet Ministers. Other members of Parliament were also part of the celebration. The event marked the anniversary of the first fleet from Britain landing at Port Jackson and raising of the flag at Sydney Cove in 1788, around 231 years ago. The Media Watch Group will this year focus on including TV news and more online platforms to its annual report. Launching its 2018 Media Monitoring Annual Report in Suva today, Executive Director Diane Ngalamungindua says they focused on various stories published in the papers.
So there were times where there were stories that were published on paper and we cross-checked it whether it would be covered on the evening news or in most cases it would be covered on tonight's news and published in the next day's paper. Somehow that displayed the importance of that news coverage being uh, disseminated out to the public. Two bills to end the partial government shutdown in the U.S. have failed. One was a proposal from President Donald Trump, another from the Democrats. Coming up in sports later with Jamie, Rafael Nadal through to the Australian Tennis Open final. But Rachel joins you now with business. Thanks, Amrita. Good evening and coming up after the break. Resort recognised five years in a row. And in going, Fiji major waterways projects to begin soon. Stay with us. Dollar, I am Eleanor. For the best classic kids, I only listen to Gold FM here in Singapore. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Senirawa. I love listening to Gold FM here in Osuri. Gold FM, only the classic kids. My name is Dino. I'm from Africa, Coral Coast, Singapore. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Altiga, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, Tokoriki Island Resort has yet again proven a firm favourite, retaining the number one honours in TripAdvisor 2019 Traveller's Choice Awards. For the fifth consecutive year, Tokoriki has picked up the number one resort for Fiji, in addition to top hotel, top hotel service and top hotel for romance. Another accolade includes number three for romance, number four for top hotel, and number eight for service in the South Pacific. General Manager Robert Ring says the latest accolade is a testament to the incredible Tokoriki team who strive to ensure the guest experience is beyond memorable. The boutique island resort, which is adult-only, is located in the Mamanuda Islands. Now, in another first for the tourism sector, inbound tour operator Rosie Holidays has sealed direct air charters that will link China's diamond of the Boha Gulf, Taijin, with Fiji. On February 1st, the first charter of 300 passengers on Fiji Airways flight will arrive at the Nandi International Airport in the lead-up to the Chinese New Year holidays. According to the Chinese lunar calendar, this is the year of the pig. Managing Director for Rosie Holidays, Tony Witten, says this will be the fourth year they will be airing, running air charters of this kind. The second direct charter flight for Taijin to Nandi is scheduled for February 7th. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the global trading market. The fear of slowing global growth, particularly in China, has kept markets volatile. Analysts warn that demand for a wide range of commodities and products could weaken this year. In the Eurozone, the European Central Bank decided not to change interest rates and maintain an ultra-relaxed monetary policy. This comes as the EU economy faces the most significant slowdown in the last five years. Meanwhile, traders are looking for hints of any progress in trade talks ahead of discussions next week in Washington. They are assessing the economic impact of the longest shutdown in the U.S. history that's affecting the normal flow of growth data. And that's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Thanks, Sean. On to the exchange rates as it was set this morning. The mixed day for the Fiji dollar today, it was up against the Australian as well as the New Zealand dollar and the euro. Taking a look at the commodities market, oil prices rose to 53.79 a barrel, gold decreased to 1,282 per ounce, and silver also declined to close at 15.30 an ounce. And in Going Fiji tonight, the Waterways Ministry will soon begin its major projects. In a press conference this afternoon, Minister Dr. Mahendra Reddy says these projects include the protection of riverbanks and the construction of seawalls. 
But he says the Nandakuni River Bank protection will begin in more than three weeks, costing more than $900,000, while the one in Thailevu will cost more than $400,000. He says they are committed to increasing the resilience of our vulnerable communities living along coastal areas as well as communities living along river banks. Seawall um, uh, protection work in Lamini village uh, worth one million dollars uh, will start in three months time and also Namoli village uh, in, in Lotoka uh, worth about seven hundred thousand dollars which start in three weeks time. And that's a wrap from the business desk for this week. Jamie joins you now with the latest in sports. Thanks, Rachel, and good evening. Up ahead in sports, BG7's tournament team announced. And women's IDC kicks off in Suva today. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mitch FM. Mitch FM is hot. I'm Charlene Robert, Mirchi FM, Rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sona Min, Osodi Jackson, Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt, I'm in Bubble Singer Line, Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Pritika from Jax Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. PGA Airways men's servants coach Gareth Baber has named his 12-member squad for the Hamilton tournament that kicks off tomorrow morning. As early anticipated, Apanisa Dakambalavu has been listed in, as the 13th man in the list released by World Rugby. Robust forwards Josova Kurunambili and Paolo Nransinukula returns to the team after missing the Dubai and Cape Town Sevens last month. Baber has maintained core players at Jerry Tuwai, Alosio Nanduba, Waisea Nadungu, and skipper Kalyoni Nasoko. Meanwhile, on the eve of the Hamilton Sevens, captain Kalyoni Nasoko says as defending champion, the players are under no added pressure. Speaking to FBC Sports this morning, Nasoko says the players are only concerned with their individual roles and playing as a team. Vasil Prasad reports. It can be tough to defend the Hamilton title, but the Fiji 7 skipper Kalyon Nasoko knows it's not impossible. Coming into the tournament, you have to just focus on our individual role, on things that uh, we work on, this uh, uh, sense of pressure, because we've been, been to tournaments uh, like this before. So we'll just focus on our individual roles, on the things we work on with the coach on the last uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, I think the boys are ready. Nasoko says their focus is on the first game against Wales tomorrow morning. We just focus on Wales uh, at the moment on the first game. From then, then uh, we've been on uh, games on, uh, on the weekend and uh, we've been working on it uh, with a couple of days. Coach Gareth Baber has advised the players to treat every game as a final. The players are aware it's six finals we're going to have to play um, and uh, we'll prepare today. As they say, recover and make sure we're in the right state for tomorrow morning. Fiji defeated South Africa 24-17 in the final last year. Mashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Hamilton Sevens organizers are banking on Pacific fans to light up this weekend's tournament. So much so that the Waiata Artist Trust has been recruited by New Zealand Rugby to help set the atmosphere amongst fans. This well, a mother and daughter are slightly disappointed they couldn't compete together in the Women's Football Inter-District Championship that started in Suva today. They're both still excited to be representing Nandi at the competition. Kim Neal will play for Nandi tomorrow with daughter Lilia Marie cheering from the sidelines. Korei Tandolala with the details. Braving the Suva son, Lilia Marie Neal from USA says she is disappointed with that she cannot play after training with her Nandi team since last year. We've been trying since August actually to get our registrations in and all that, but we had a miscommunication issue here in Fiji and so um, our release from FIFA that we needed, um, since I'm a minor, it's harder for me to get. Her mother, who couldn't feature today, just cannot wait to get on the field tomorrow for the Jet Setters. We've been training, my daughter and I, with the team the last few weeks and we're really looking forward to playing. I was lucky enough to have my international uh, 
clearance, so um, I'm hoping to be on the field with the girls tomorrow. There are some teams which did face issues in getting their players together, as most are high school students. Uh, we face a lot of challenges, especially for the school students, especially for our Form 6s and Form 7s. With uh, uh, big exams coming up, we have FSLCs and FSFE uh, that sometimes clashes with our um, it clashes with our training timetable, so we always try and make an effort to cater for our high school students who are also participating in uh, the senior women team. The tournament ends on Sunday. Corey Tandulala, FBC Sports. 54 teams will participate in the Fiji Secondary Schools Rugby League competition next week. Amongst those teams it will be the under-15 Rishikul Sanatan College under-15 side a team that will go into the competition with a wonderful mix of new and first-timers to the sport. Kore Tandolala has more. It will be a first appearance for the Rishikul team on the rugby field and manager Chutasa Modesui says this is part of their sport's development. I think this is the first time they've been uh, uh, playing with a rugby ball. As from Rishikul Primary, there are few the schools to Rishikul College, I think. Most often they have not uh, touched any rugby balls from the past years. I think they only play soccer. But the reasons why we have to input this uh, rugby league for this year, so that they can uh, uh, showcase their skills, their talent. These youngsters are excited about the rugby league championship this season. I like uh, rugby league because it's fun and also we enjoy playing with our friends. And uh, Captain Kevin Ngamma inspired me to play rugby league. Kunal Singh is one of the four Indo-Fijian players representing Rishikul in the under-15 grade. Usually we used to go to our big ground over there at our level. Then we used to play rugby league and touch over there. And we're having uh, plenty of boys over there. And big, uh, big boys, even the big men over there are playing too. The Rishikul under-15 rugby league squad will be facing Dudley High School in its first match of the rugby league season at Ratu Thakombo Park in Nosori on Saturday. Kuri Tandulala, FBC Sports. Rafael Nadal is on course to create tennis history after making it into the Australian Open final. The Spaniard crushing Greek youngster Stefanos Tsitsipas 6-2, 6, -2, 6, -4, 6 -0 in the men's semi-final. Meanwhile, the women's final will, will see Petra Kvitova face Naomi Osaka. Rising star Osaka will be seeking her second straight Grand Slam crown after her U.S. Open victory last year. In today's Play of the Day, Fijian, Samoan and Tongan Sevens players teaming up in song ahead of the Hamilton Sevens tomorrow. I know that I know That's it from Sports Tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather. And if you're a wine drinker, you might want to check out the Smart Aerator in our new media segment. That's right after the break. My name is Nambualum Buase. This is Prenny North. Mashur hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 bhi sabhi jagah mashur hai. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. Seema Nakasi se, main Radio Fiji 2 pasand karti hu sunne ke liye. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. Main hu Uncle King Singh Tokar Town ke taxi driver, waise rugby famous hai, waise Radio Fiji 2 famous hai. Radio Fiji 2 desh ki dharkan. New media waiting for wine to breathe or decanting wine is something so time consuming that many people simply skip it. And Angie joins us with weather. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. It's been a great Friday with loads of sunshine in most areas of the nation where it looks like rain spared us, well at least for the day bit. 
In other centers, taking a look in the west, quite mild, the sun was glowing with just the right amount of sunshine. Eastwards from Peck Harbour to Suva, quite humid with very bright sunny spells, showers are on and heavier falls can be expected later tonight. And up north, quite muggy, but the brisky winds are doing quite well. At sea, easterly winds 10 to 50 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, high tide at 10.07 p.m. with low tide at 4.29 a.m. Sunrise at 5.49. For tomorrow, another super sunny day is in store, which will be followed by light afternoon showers. So if you're planning on a get-together, it sounds great. Tomorrow's stems, get your hats on if you're in Lambasa as the temperatures will rise to 33 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, this great hot weather is set to continue with some afternoon isolated showers. So have all the fun you can and be safe. Great weekend to you. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. I'm Rita. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked what should the Fiji Sevens team do to win the Hamilton title? Right now it would be teamwork and also good defence. Basically everything is good about our physical team, but the only thing that they need to correct is their discipline. If they do so, then I'm sure they can win any tournament. With good defence and teamwork, they can make it. With good defence and attack, they can definitely win the Hamilton Sevens. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, a playful pooch kept her favorite toddler giggling by jumping onto a sofa and going nose to nose. The pooch kissing him on the nose, running away and repeating over and over again, leaving the 18-month-old giggling. Now recapping the main stories. $2 million bill for Fiji Sevens. Charges amended for Australian couple. And contractors warned over OHS Act. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to our poll question segment. This week, we're asking, should Prime Ministers of Australia and New Zealand visit Fiji more often? Visit our FBC website to answer. Before we go, our shot of the day with the Hamilton 7 starting tomorrow. Fijian fans in New Zealand are already gearing up. Seen here on the suburbs, community side fans have been out cheering the boys during training this week. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fpcnews at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News or you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. And that was your FPC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe and good night. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in the cash on the water wrong and bullet fib. Number two, I answer. Why I was it say, say Lombasa, and the teletain of our Roman and bullet fib, number two answer. We have the Timeli, a point of town, no hinga toka, teletakin and a barrow on a bullet fib, number two answer. Number two answer. Never go funny in a town, no singer toka, get on the teletakan and bullet fib, number two answer. Bullet fib, number two answer.